Hi students and welcome again to another e-lesson video. This one over introductions, more specifically I mean introductory paragraphs for essays. As with all these videos, feel uh, please feel free to pause and rewind at any time to take notes, rewatch, or get caught up. Topics we're going to look at today are what an intro should do and what an intro should sound like, what an intro should not do, uh, crafting an engaging introduction, going to give you guys a kind of an overview on how to approach crafting a really good introductory paragraph, and then finally I'm going to end with some techniques to use with caution in your introductory paragraphs. I want to start though with a comparison of a couple intros. Two different introductory paragraphs, both introducing uh, essays on the same topic dealing with incentivized charity which was uh, I believe the um, argumentative prompt on the 2000 and oh gosh 2005-2006 uh, AP Lang exam. Let's take a look at this first one here. Charity has always been a most generous form of aid that has affected many people throughout the course of time. It was the act of charity that helped people after 9-11, Katrina and many other natural and unnatural disasters. I do believe that it is okay to give incentives for charitable acts. I support my position with reading, my observation of human nature, and my experience with the church. All right, so that's one version of an introductory paragraph. Let's take a look at another one, the second one. What does it mean to treat human behavior as if everyone has a price? When the government offers tax deductions for charitable donations, when a soup kitchen feeds the homeless on the condition that they attend church, or when the writer of a will attaches stipulations to a bequest, these are all examples of ways society places price tags on altruism. We still call these acts charity, but the promise of reciprocation makes them decidedly uncharitable. All right. Looking at both of those uh, introductions, it's pretty obvious which one sounds more sophisticated, and it's the second one. And it's not just because the vocabulary is a little elevated; uh, it's because it's, it's written a, with a whole different approach to, to the uh, introductory paragraph. Uh, and so, let's uh, take a look at what an intro should do. All right. An intro should, first and foremost, engage your reader. That is the primary uh, responsibility for an intro paragraph. It's supposed to entice the reader to read further. Uh, it needs to do this by easing him or her into the topic of discussion, not just launching right into what your, uh, what your essay is about, what your discussion is about. Um, if you just jump right in with the very first sentence of your essay and leap right into your discussion, it can be very disorienting to the reader. Your intro should also, uh, somewhere along the way, through the thesis statement, point him or her in the right direction of your thinking. We've discussed that in a previous lesson. An introduction should make thought-provoking claims or observations or raise interesting questions along the way, and it should be relatively short. These are some basic guidelines for what an intro should do. And as you can see from my good example here, I kind of do all of these things. Uh, what does it mean to treat human behavior as if everyone has a price? There, boom, that is an, a, a thought-provoking, engaging opening statement intended to really get my readers thinking, uh, and more than that, enticing them to read further. Uh, I, along the way, I give, or next, I give some, uh, some concrete examples of what I'm talking about. And then finally, I end with a thesis statement that's nice and open. We still call these acts charity, but the promise of reciprocation makes them decidedly uncharitable. So I've hit most of the points of what an intro should do uh, in my uh, sample there. Uh, let's talk about what an intro should not do. An intro should never jump right into the topic. An intro should never feature cliches like throughout history or a wise man once said. These are just terrible. Um, an intro, I see this every now and then, should never offer dictionary definitions of a word. Uh, if uh, part of your argument or part of your discussion uh, comes from dealing with a specific definition of a term, use your own definition. Don't, don't cite the dictionary. There's really no need for that. Uh, an intro should never acknowledge that you're actually writing an essay or that you're responding to the prompt. What I mean here is that your language should never refer to the fact that you are writing an essay or responding to a prompt. You should never use the words, in this essay, I will try to prove, or in response to the prompt, this is correct. Never acknowledge those things. Remember, we're not writing assignments anymore. We're writing pieces of literature. And finally, an intro should never include platitudes or other hollow statements like we're all human beings or drugs are bad or really anything that just doesn't need to be said uh, can be taken out of an intro. And you see that in my poorer example here, it kind of violates a lot of those, uh, those rules there. Um, charity has always been a most generous form of aid that has affected many people throughout the course of time. Yawn. 
not only have you delivered a very hollow statement that really, who needs to know this? Who doesn't know this? This is, this is not news. Uh, you've used the cliche throughout the course of time, which is not just cliche, it's actually wrong. Um, time is billions of years old. Charity is only as old as society, so a few hundred thousand years old. So anyway... Um, Next, it was the act of charity that helped people after 9-11, Katrina, and many other natural and unnatural disasters. All right, it's a good example of what the heck you're talking about. But again, when your opening statement is something so banal as this, I really don't need examples. And then finally, the student commits the cardinal sin of acknowledging, um, acknowledging that they are writing an essay through this kind of wording. I support my position with reading, my observation of you. Oh, could this be any more formulaic? Could this sound any more like a school essay? So let's take a look at some, uh, some steps to crafting an engaging introduction, steps that can help you avoid kind of that poor introduction that we keep looking at. Try beginning with a guided thesis statement in mind. Don't write this thesis statement in your essay yet. As we talked about with thesis statements, um, it's a good idea to have sort of a, a guiding thesis statement to help you write an essay, but not include that where your thesis statement should go. Uh, instead, just write this guiding thesis statement on a piece of scratch paper and save it for your conclusion. Something like this. This is the kind of the guiding thesis statement I started with. Incentivized charity, while still serving the greater good, cannot be considered true charity because it, is, because it is neither unselfish nor economically expedient as a means of aiding others. Okay, That's my guiding thesis. If I threw that into my intro, though, I don't really leave myself very much room to draw this conclusion at the end. So once you've got your guided thesis written down on a scrap of paper or a sticky note, ask yourself this. What does this issue really boil down to? What is this topic really about? What are the broader issues at work here? Why do I really believe what I believe here? And here's something that I, I would kind of write down. I'd say, so I'm talking about incentivized charity. This issue really boils down to, well, first, a common misperception. And this misperception is perpetuated everywhere in society, from government tax breaks to rewards for donations and all kinds of stuff. This issue also boils down to um, our placing a price tag on altruistic behavior, placing monetary value on human behavior, those sorts of things. So I want to start my essay with a few statements on something like this to give my essay a broader context. That's what I mean by easing your reader into your essay. Um, our brains work a lot better when we read things that move from the general to the more specific. Uh, and this is why we need to ease our reader into our essays. We need to provide them with the general framework for an understanding before we get to a more sp the more specific understanding we want them to have in the topic of our discussion. So once you've framed your discussion in more general terms, you can then begin working out an engaging opening statement. Try with your opening statement uh, using something that is short and sweet, as short as possible. If you start writing something, that, a statement, an opening statement that's too long, it, it's not as engaging as it could be. It, it can frustrate and lose the reader. So try something short and sweet. Then expand on this with some explanation or exemplification. It's far better to start an essay um, with a short statement with and, and a follow-up statement that expands on that short statement rather than combining those two sentences and making one really long sentence to open your essay. Uh, and then, once you've crafted that uh, opening statement and expanded on it, just let your discussion flow logically from there. You know, have the end goal in mind. Know that you're trying to just introduce this topic and get to uh, a sophisticated thesis statement and end, but let your discussion flow logically to that uh, sophisticated thesis statement. And uh, here's again is uh, my example of crafting that uh, in, that engaging introduction. It starts with a short and sweet uh, statement. This one's a question. What does it mean to treat human behavior as if everyone has a price? Nice and thought-provoking, short and sweet. Then I've expanded on it with a much longer sentence. And finally, that leads me directly into kind of my open-ended thesis here. We still call these acts charity, but the promise of reciprocation makes them decidedly uncharitable. My reader knows that I'm going to start, uh, that I'm not really arguing for or against incentivized charity here. I'm arguing against deeming it charity. 
All right, here's some techniques to use with caution in an intro paragraph. I get questions about these all the time. Can we use multiple paragraphs for our introduction? Of course you can. There's no rule that says you can't do that. If your intro moves from one idea to another, uh, and your intro, you know, remember, a paragraph needs to focus on just presenting one idea. If your intro moves from one idea to another before it finally gets to your thesis statement, break it into two paragraphs. There's nothing that says you can't do that. Um, however, keep in mind that too much introduction is frustrating to read. I would not recommend um, that you uh, you write long introductory paragraphs. In fact, some of the weaker essays I see, especially on timed essays, are those essays where the introductory paragraph is the longest paragraph. Um, and what that does is it, the, I can just tell right away what the student did. They spent so much time crafting this, this uh, really elaborate introduction that they didn't have time to really flesh out the rest of their, uh, para, their uh, essay. So um, keep your introductions as short as possible, but feel free to break it up into multiple paragraphs if it's moving from uh, one idea to another. Uh, using rhetorical questions. Be careful with these. They can be very effective or they can be disastrous. Never ask questions that I, the reader, can answer easily. And also don't ask so many questions that, you appear he that it makes you appear hesitant to actually assert something. Um, what I mean with this first one, don't ask questions I can answer easily, is if your essay starts off with a rhetorical question like, have you ever wondered, um, have you ever wondered where the, you know, where the plastic tips at the end of your shoelaces come from? Why would I ever wonder that? I could very easily just answer the question that you asked me with a no and put your essay in the garbage can. Um, so don't ask questions that I can answer easily, and especially don't ask me questions that I can answer with a, a firm no and then no, no longer be interested in your essay. Um, also with rhetorical questions, don't uh, fill your introductions with so many rhetorical questions that it, it makes you a appear like you're not going to say anything. Uh, an essay is first and foremost a discussion where you assert something and you come to conclusions, those sorts of things. So don't, uh, don't cop out, so to speak, by just leaving it up in the air with some questions. Uh, next, employing quotations. Quotations have for a long time been a standard for a, uh, a standard way to lead off an essay. Uh, Henry David Thoreau once said blah blah blah, and, th and thus goes the rest of the essay. But I want to warn you about using quotations. Um, first of all, uh, just introducing an essay with a quotation like a, that kind of eye-rolling example I just gave, let's stop doing that. It's so cliché quit doing that. Uh, yeah, leading off with a quotation is pretty cliche. Um, make sure that if you employ quotations uh, in your introduction, they can be used to, you know, to add depth to what you're saying as long as they're meaningful. So employ meaningful quotations from credible sources. Uh, don't just throw a quote in there because it sounds good because a reader is going to see right through that and think, well, you're, you don't really know what you're doing. Uh, and finally, don't overdo it. Keep your quotations short and sweet. Uh, don't cite an entire like passage from something. Uh, don't cite like a you know an entire stanza from a song for crying out loud. Don't don't overdo it with quotations. And finally, making analogies. Analogies can make a discussion really strong. They can really help help you to uh, clarify what you're trying to say, um, in, in because you're saying it in terms of something else. That's what an analogy is. Uh, but uh, it, analogies can only make your discussion really strong uh, if they're clear. If the uh, comparison you make is really a poor comparison, like the two things are really shouldn't be compared, or if the comparison you're making is confusing, you're actually taking away from your essay. You're making it less clear. So always make sure that an analogy you use is actually helping make your discussion clearer, and you're not just making it again to sound to sound intelligent, or you know because you haven't used an analogy in an essay yet, or you know anything like that. Make sure that everything you write is purposeful, and that goes especially for analogies. That's all I have over introductory paragraphs. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to watch again, and I'll see you in class.